Hey everyone. Okay, we're live again. I do not know what happened there, <laughs> but the computer totally stopped. So I apologize if you were listening just a second ago. Let's try this for round two. Um, I am super excited today to hop on. I want to do a really quick live and talk about the number one thing you can do to push loads of inflammation from your body without ever changing your diet. And it just so happens that this one trick, <laughs> hi Renee, is also the very best way to support you through your detox process during our one week challenge of removing processed sugar from your diet. If you guys started yesterday, the challenge of removing processed sugar from your diet, woohoo, so awesome. Be sure to comment below. Let me know that you started. If you're starting today or tomorrow, let me know what day are you starting on? What day are you committing to? If you didn't start yesterday, you for sure, um, you're not like out of the race, right? Not that there's a race, but that expression. Just make sure that you um, commit to yourself a starting time and to follow through with this week. So there is a Facebook Live yesterday that talks about the number one most inflammatory food, processed sugar, and how to swap it out for options that taste similar but do not inflame. So be sure to catch that. There's another post yesterday on the 50 plus names of processed sugar. So you can become a renegade researcher and really begin to take that out of your diet. Now, here's the thing, you guys. There is a trick that even if you're like, oh, I can't get to the challenge until next week or in five days, there's something you can do right now that will make a huge difference in the world of inflammation in your body. And if you are doing the challenge right now and you're pushing the, you're eliminating the processed sugar that's going into your body, your body is going to be going through de a detox. We'll talk more about that tomorrow, but you know, you may feel symptoms of irritability, headaches, nausea, bloating, difficulty sleeping, or you may be really tired, right? These are all very common, totally normal and natural things to experience when you're detoxing. But there is one thing you can do that will make you push through that detox with so much more efficiency and ease. This is the, honestly, it's something you all know, probably. You're going to hear me and say, oh yeah, I know that. But I want you to take a moment to really soak it in because this is, cannot be overemphasized. It is absolutely necessary. And we can talk about some of the science. So simple. So are you ready? Drum roll. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, you guys, the number one thing you can do to remove processed sugar from your body and uh, inflammation, drink water, loads and loads of water. And when I say drink loads and loads of water, what I actually mean is drink a gallon of water per day. So if you're an adult, right, you want to drink a gallon of water per day if you have chronic inflammation in your body. Now, Renee and Carrie, you're sitting here. If you're like, holy cow, that is so much water, let me know. <laughs> I'm guessing that is, that's the response that most people tell me. That is a ton of water. It's much more water for most people than the standard recommended amount of water, which is typically one ounce of water for every half pound of your body. So for example, if you weigh 100 pounds, then the standard recommendation is that you drink 50 ounces of water. If you weigh 150 pounds, the standard recommendation is you drink 75 ounces of water. This standard recommendation comes from um, the mindset of staying hydrated, hydrated, right? Remember, my specialty, my zone of genius is removing inflammation from the body. So I'm coming at it at a slightly different angle. Yes, we need to be hydrated, but more importantly, we need to support the liver and kidneys, which are responsible for processing the majority of water, um, or excuse me, excuse me, the majority of toxins and inflammation from your body. And the number one way to do that, other than taking out these inflammatory foods, is to drink a gallon of water if you're an adult and you're experiencing chronic inflammation per day. And if you're like, I don't know if I have chronic inflammation, then here's how you know. Do you experience some sort of chronic symptom? So when we first started this, oh, awesome, Renee, I'm going to give you some tricks. Renee says, I've been trying to drink a gallon of water a day. I'm going to give you guys some tricks on how to make that happen. But if you, when we first started this, opened this Facebook group up, we talked about 
how do you know if chronic inflammation is impacting you? If you don't know, you can go find the, the post that has an image of Time Magazine and it talks about inflammation. And I wrote up kind of an article for you guys to determine how do you know if you're experiencing chronic inflammation? The answer is super simple though. If you have been experiencing a chronic symptom or more for a couple months or more, then you have chronic inflammation in your body. The tricky part is that it shows up differently on each person, right? So it could be chronic headaches, it could be digestive disc issues, bloating, difficulty losing weight, uh, hormonal imbalance, um, it could be brain fog, it could be uh, skin conditions, autoimmune conditions, diabetes, like the list goes on and on and on and on, right? But if you have any sort of chronic symptom that you've experiencing, been experiencing on and off for a month or two or more, we know there's chronic inflammation in your body. If that is you, or if you're doing the challenge and you're removing processed sugar and we need to push to the detox, this information is really important. So how do we drink a gallon of water per day? Here's what happens, you guys. From an, an evolutionary standpoint, when we were hunters and gatherers, we would walk from water source to water source, but we didn't always have water with us. So we didn't always have a water bottle with us. They weren't really invented. We would go to a river, we'd get to a lake or a stream or a water source, and we would drink and drink and drink and drink and drink as much as we could, right? And we may set up camp there for a day or two and we drink a bunch of water, we'd get fed. But then as hunters and gatherers, we would pack up and we would move on to the next place. As we were moving from location to location, we didn't have water with us. And so our body created what is called a thirst mechanism. It is the mechanism that tells you you are either thirsty or not. This mechanism is shut off. Hi, Tina. This mechanism is shut off when, um, when water isn't available to us. Now, here's the catch. Remember, this is, an, this is something that happened to our body from an evolutionary standpoint. Our body does not know that in modern day times we can walk up to the kitchen sink and we can actually um, fill up our water bottle. Our, bo our body does not know that. The way it knows that water is available to us is if we actually drink it. So if in the morning the very first thing you do, wake up, go to the bathroom, and the very first thing you do before you have coffee or tea or read the newspaper or check your email or do anything else, is if you chug a whole quart of water, there's four quarts of water and one gallon. Um, and if you chug a whole quart of water, then what it does is it activates that thirst mechanism and it tells your body water is available to you today. A large amount of water is available to you today. If you actually sit and focus and drink this water really quickly, right, then it will, I've done this, I've timed it a million times, one quart of water, you can, you can chug it in 32 seconds or less. <laughs> so I always say, you, if being in a hurry or having lots of things to do, don't let that be, be an excuse. Channel your inner beer drinking college self is, if that was you and if it wasn't you, then just imagine, <laughs> imagine from like a video what that actually would be, right? And you can sit and just chug, chug, chug your 32 ounces. A lot of people like it warmer water, room temperature. You don't want to add anything other than lemon or lime to the water because then it actually changes how it interfaces with our liver and kidneys. But drink a whole quart of water. Here's the magic that will happen. For, for any of you, if any of you can relate, let me know. A lot of my clients tell me, I don't drink very much water, but I'm not very thirsty. Okay, this is because the thirst mechanism has been deactivated. So for many of you, as you begin drinking more and more water, you actually will become more and more thirsty. That is your body's method of speaking with you, connecting with you, telling you, this is so good. This is exactly what I need, give me more water. Water is available to me and I need more of it. Your body will talk to you. Now, the best way to ensure you get a whole gallon in, very first thing, chug that quart of water and then refill your water bottle up right away. Have you ever like finished a glass of water and then you put it down and you think, oh, I'll fill it up soon. But then you're reading a book or you get caught up in work and you never fill it up again and all of a sudden hours goes by and even though you were thirsty, you didn't drink. Okay, 
Such a simple little uh, problem and easy solution. Fill up your water bottle as soon as it's empty, fill it up right away. So that when you do get thirsty, it's immediately by your side and you can keep drinking. So first thing in the morning, chug your, your quart, which is about 32 ounces of water. Chug a quart of water. And then I set a timer by noon when I'm having lunch, or you can put a timer on your phone. Whatever you haven't finished drinking from morning till noon, you're gonna finish chugging that, right? Usually it's not a lot, but finish chugging that. Fill it up immediately from noon to three. Finish your third quart or 32 ounces. And again, at three o'clock, set a timer. If it's not gone, chug it. And then from three till 5.30 or six, I try to get all my water in by then so that I'm not up all night peeing. You will be peeing a lot these next couple of weeks, but if you are doing the, the exercise and the challenge of removing processed sugar from your diet, What's going to happen is that over the next couple of weeks, you, even though you'll be drinking the same amount of water, you'll be peeing less and less. So the water pushes all of the toxins out of your body. If you can imagine an empty riverbed and all of a sudden it's being flooded and the boulders and, and the rocks that were in that riverbed are being pushed out. But the only way, and the, the, those boulders and those rocks are symbolic of inflammation, stuck inflammation in your body, causing these chronic symptoms, right? But the only way for it to go out is through your bladder. So what happens is your bladder initially ends up sitting in a very concentrated pool of toxins and inflammation. Your bladder won't fill up all the way before it sends signals to the brain saying, yikes, we have got to get this out ASAP, eliminate, eliminate. So you're going to notice that you're going to pee a lot the next few weeks, short peas. And as you are pushing lots of inflammation out of your body, you'll notice that your bladder no longer is it concentrated toxins in your bladder. And so you'll be able to fill your bladder up all the way and pee efficiently. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> so while peeing a lot may be a bit mm, obtrusive, obnoxious, just embrace the thought that you are pushing loads of inflammation out of your body. The top two ways to eliminate inflammation from your body is through peeing and sweating. We can't sweat all day long, but we certainly can be peeing all day long, okay? Um, so really quickly, I just wanna remind you guys, this is a lot of water, but it's beyond staying hydrated. Water is to your liver and kidneys what gasoline is to a car. If your car is running on empty and doesn't have enough gasoline, you're going to be sputtering along the side of the highway, right? You're not, your car is not going to be able to work very efficiently, go very fast. The same thing happens with our liver and kidneys. If, if our liver and kidneys don't have enough water, essentially their fuel tank is on empty and they cannot process then the toxins and inflammation that are in our body, either from diet, stress, environmental toxins, um, whatever it may be that's causing so much inflammation in your body. So drink a gallon of water to help push you through the detox process. If you guys are taking processed sugar out of your body, the more water you can drink, the less detoxy symptoms you'll feel. Or if you haven't started the challenge, at least begin this water, drinking this water, and see what kind of a difference that can make alone. Honestly, I've seen people lose five to 10 pounds in about 10 days of time simply by adopting this water technique. So if you're listening to this and you're like, I'm ready to, uh, to like join this, the water challenge, please comment below. And I have Carrie saying, I work in education and don't have time to use the bathroom most of the day. What do you suggest? Okay, I used to be a teacher too, Carrie, so I totally hear what you're saying. Here's my suggestion. Very first thing, like I'm talking the moment you wake up, get that water in because then likely by the time your first class starts, you will be able to... Um, have eliminated most of that water. And then think about when are your breaks? When do you have a planning period? When is your lunch break? And start drinking that water about an hour, like chugging it, 30 minutes to an hour before your planning break so that you can eliminate then. And then as soon as you're done with school, just really make an effort in the afternoon, like before you go to meetings, before you get caught up in emails or the second kids are gone, really make an effort to chug, chug, chug so you can get lots of that water in as well. Um, it is true, nurses and teachers have the um, have the hardest time 
in terms of, of following this because you're just always on, right? You, you have kids, you can't leave them, or you're a nurse, you've got patients, you can't leave them. Renee says, won't it dilute the enzymes in the gut? So for most people, it does not. What I do find is that if you are pregnant, then taking some sort of electrolyte is great. That could be as simple as putting sea salt into your water. You can go buy also on Amazon or a health food company or health food grocery store. You can buy liquid electrolytes. We don't wanna do the Powerade electrolytes, right? It's full of sugar. But you can go buy like an electrolyte that's just minerals um, and just put a couple drops in your water. It doesn't really taste like much. So if you're concerned about it, you certainly can do that. It does not hurt. Um, but the only people that clients that I've ever had in nine years of time um, that had an issue with it, or speaking for myself as well, was when I was pregnant. Great question though. Um, if any of you are listening, you have any other questions, let me know. If you're going to give this a try, please let me know. Show me pictures of you chugging your water or with your water bottle. And the other thing I will leave you with is this idea of um, finding routine, right? Find a routine for drinking water. Like, for example, when I get in the car, I always have a full water bottle with me. And I do that because it's really easy to drink water and drive. There's nothing else to do, right? So it's like a time that's easy for me to drink up. Um, so see if there's a habit or a time of the day that if you commute on a train or if you um, ride after a hike or whatever it may be, if there's some sort of habit or routine where you can drink a lot of water, um, that's another trick. Um, okay, I'm just reading Renee's. I have, oh, you have GERD. Oh, yeah. So if you have GERD, right, that's definitely an inflammatory response. My son had that as well when he was little. Chugging may be a little bit more, more tricky, so it may be more just um, having some nice warm water and drinking steadily throughout the day. So find a way that works for you to get that amount of water in, but it's nice to have the time check, like kind of first thing by 10 a.m., your first quart is gone, by noon, your second quart, by three, your third quart, and six, your fourth quart. I hope this helps you guys post lots of questions in or comments. Let me know if you're joining. And if any of you have friends, if you're in here and you're loving the information and you have any friends that you think would be interested in either learning if inflammation is impacting them, helping them remove inflammation from their body, um, be sure to invite them in. We'd love to have the more the merrier in this group. Okay, have a great day. Bye-bye.